welcome back to Tech Talks Podcast. I'm Tech Will Write, your host. And here at this channel, I like to go through inspirational books um, that are faith-based and to encourage one for their faith walk and hopefully to help um, boost them up and edify them um, in, the, in the loving um, way <laughs> that I possibly, human, humanly possibly can. You know, I can't really do anything without the Lord. So... Anyway, that's that's my intentions here at Tech Talks Podcast is to um, encourage you uh, in your faith journey with the Lord and to help you, um, hopefully to help you, um, not just to be blessed, but to help you in a way to get to the next place that you need to be with the Lord. Um, that is my hope for you today. Okay, so we are in this book, like I said, Perfect Love. We've been in this book. We're taking it one chapter a week. And for those of you who are new here, God bless you. Thank you for stopping by. It's not necessary and you're not obligated to get a book. You can listen and follow along at your own whim. and Or you could buy this book and um, go through it. And of course, you're going to get a lot more out of it than what I share here today. And no, I am not getting paid to do this. <laughs> I just thought I would put that out there. Um, it'd be cool, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's um, talk about our highlighted moments in this book. Um, we're on chapter 10, Sad, Mad, or Glad. And I have on page 116, she says, First of all, we should not see our relationship with God as a duty, but rather as a privilege. It is not something we have to be a part of, but something we are blessed and privileged to be a part of. I like that. I I, I think sometimes back when I was like maybe, I don't know, in my early 20s, maybe, maybe even my late teens, I felt... Like, I I knew God and I, I loved God, but I also kind of felt in this weird sense that, like, there was a duty to do. Like, I had to, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it just, it, it kind of, and then having that and then following that as a duty kind of, like, changed my perspective. And so when hard things did happen my um perspective with with god got derailed or watered down and yeah so i appreciate that highlight moment and then she goes on to things that dilute joy um so one of the things i'll read some of the things there's a lot of the really good points that she said that dilute joy my highlighted moment um is this one there may be even more people than I had imagined who suffer from this wrong view of God, thinking he is easily angered and disappointed with us most of the time, unless we can re react perfectly to every situation in life. God understands all of our pain, and he is the God of all comfort, who comforts us in every affliction. 2 Corinthians 1 uh, three through four. So, um, I, I sometimes struggle with the whole reaction, react perfectly. You know, I think the legalistic religious side has twisted some things. Definitely. I can say when it comes to that, because I'm kind of like, you know, I, I feel like um, that if I don't react with this certain peacefulness or if I overreact or if I get too angry or if I meet, even cuss and swear at something, I've done that so many times. Um, and then I start to think, I'm like, oh my gosh, I bet you... I bet you um, God's disappointed in how I responded to that. And I'm sure he's angry right now with me. And um, I don't know if I can 
I don't know if I want to come to him about it because I'm ashamed of it. I don't like it. I don't like this part of me. In fact, I despise it. I wish I didn't blow up like I did. I wish I didn't say those words like I did. And on and on and on the list goes. But I like how she keeps reassuring that God is way above our thoughts um, when it comes to that. I have to remind myself too, even, um, I have to remind myself that we humanize God a little too much. Like, I think we start to think, oh, he's, he's probably thinking like the way I would react to that. He's probably thinking how, if I'm disappointed, if I'm disappointed with myself, then of course God would have to be disappointed with myself. If my mom or dad are disappointed with me, then who's to say God would be too? Because they get me, they know me, I see this, they see me, and so does he. And I'm pretty sure he's thinking similar thoughts. And I like that she keeps reiterating in this throughout this book that he loves us unconditionally. And it goes beyond what we understand. It goes beyond our, our knowledge, our knowing. Like the Bible says, he gives us peace, the peace that passes all understanding, which is basically, I understand this, but I still have peace that that's doesn't fit in the circumstances that I have. It just doesn't. And that's the, um, that's just the super side of him. That's the grace big side of him that, that leaves me fickled sometimes because I'm like, I don't understand that. I don't get it, but, but he does. And I trust, I trust that what I don't know is okay because he's got me and he, he, he loves me and I'm grateful for that. On page 121, she says, Jesus said to love our enemies. If we should love our enemies, then it stands to reason we should love ourselves too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, you know, I have to admit, there's been times I struggled with loving and accepting myself because honestly, I kind of felt like there was something wrong with me. Um, and that, and that is because when I was a young girl, um, I was diagnosed with a learning disability and back then they kind of didn't really have a unique label for what I had, I suppose. Um, I'm sure now it's probably like ADD or something, but back then they just said, oh, your daughter has learning disability and she needs to like. I don't know, need some one-on-one -on -one attention or something. So I've had that in the back of my mind. And I even had um, teachers, believe it or not, um, treat me like as if there was something like horrible about me because they would even talk negatively to other children. And I'll never forget this. I've had a time when I was sitting at my desk and I looked up and the teacher was talking to another student and kind of in front of me, I was like a couple rows back. And anyway, she, she was laughing about something and come, come to find out she was laughing about me. And then I, I just, at first I didn't know. And then I smiled and at, at them. And then I, then I heard her say, Oh, look, she is so completely dumb. She doesn't even, she's smiling and she doesn't even realize that we're talking about her. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe my own teacher just did this. And I was old enough and young enough to be like, what the heck, you know? So with that being said, I I had, a, um, I think, a basically a seed planted from, from my childhood thinking that there's something wrong with me um and I'm like a low grade quality of a person and I don't really deserve um anything better I I just you know I had a very negative mindset and viewpoint of me so when I read this Jesus said to love our enemies 
If we should love our enemies, then it stands to reason we should love ourselves too. And it got to me in a way because I'm like, oh my gosh, I have seen myself as my own enemy. I am my own worst enemy. And I think some of you can say, I can testify to that too, Tekla. I get it, you know. I have self-sabotaged myself so many times, so many times. And um, I'm like, you know, after reading this, I've got to stop. I really should stop because she's tr truly saying, well, if we're our enemies, then we should love our enemies and be kind to ourselves and not hate ourselves. Does that make sense? Hit like if it does. Um, so that is about it. That's all I have for you today. I can probably elaborate so much more, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. And I am so grateful for you being here. I will close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you have um, such great love for us. Unconditional love that surpasses our understanding, Lord. Lord, I trust you. And I pray that the next person who's listening puts their faith and trust in you and that they would receive your love so that they can be um, free from hating themselves and being a victim of themselves. Lord, help us all to forgive ourselves. Help us to be healed and deliver us from the lies of the enemy who's been inflicting this upon us and oppressing us and hindering us to become our greatest potential in you, Jesus. I pray. Amen. All right. See you next time here at Tech Talks Podcast. Remember, give yourself permission to be embraced and be loved by God. See you next time.